Hey, how's it going? This is Joe Intel, and today I want to talk about what to consider when buying in ceiling speakers. OSD is a channel sponsor, and they sent all of these out to me for review. I am allowed to say whatever I want about these products, and they don't get to review this video before I release it. Now, the first thing to consider is why are you choosing in ceiling speakers? If you do have the option to use typical floor standing or bookshelf speakers, I usually recommend that just because the enclosure is set and the designers are able to design the speaker specifically for that enclosure. Whereas with something like an in ceiling speaker, you're kind of just guessing because we don't know how large your walls are, how close the edges of the walls are, and there are different factors that play into the overall sound. So that's the first thing I want you to consider is do you definitely want to go with ceiling speakers and there are a lot of use cases where you should use ceiling speakers if you've decided that you definitely want ceiling speakers the next thing i want you to consider is is it going to be more for music or for movies so there's going to be a difference between whether you just want to have music playing all around or if you're using it for critical listening and especially different if you're using this for movies using something like Dolby Atmos, Oro, or DTS. The main thing to look at is speaker placement. Where are you going to place the speakers as well as the angle of the speakers? Now, the reason I say that most of the time I recommend typical floor standing speakers is because two channel music is meant to come at you from the front instead of down from the ceiling. But in the case of just wanting music in different rooms, well, you're not really listening critically. You're just kind of doing what you need to do and you want to have some ambient music, in which case ceiling speakers are perfect. For movies, it's a little bit different because you're probably going to be sitting in one specific location and these different surround formats require that speakers be placed in certain locations. For home theater, you're definitely going to need a left, center, and a right channel and those are going to be in front of you. They're not going to be above you. And so that's when something like this, an angle driver, would come in handy. Now, if you're using Dolby Atmos setup, they require height speakers, in which case something like this or this speaker over here where it's not angled facing more downward might not be such an issue. You still might want to consider an angle driver because there are benefits to pointing the speakers at you. If you're planning on using something like Oro 3D, but you definitely need ceiling speakers, maybe an angle speaker might be better because you can use them more like front height speakers because of that angle. You can put them above your other speakers. You're able to kind of place them towards your listening position and they're able to act more like height speakers instead of ceiling speakers. Another thing to consider is the size of the speaker and the mounting depth. Now, all of these drivers provided by OSD are six and a half. I've also seen five and a quarters. They also have eight inch drivers as well as a 10 inch driver that I've seen as well. Also consider the mounting depth. As you can see, some are deeper than others and you wanna make sure you have enough clearance behind the wall. Now, all of these speakers here are coaxial designs, meaning that the tweeter and the woofer are aligned on an axis and you can see it's a center axis. All of these have tweeters that you can angle towards your listening position. The A650 does it a little different in that the tweeter housing comes out of the center of the speaker. You can rotate the entire housing, but one thing to consider is that if you're putting the tweeter at an extreme angle, you wanna make sure that the cone doesn't touch the tweeter when it's at full excursion. Now, for the most part, if you're using a crossover to take out the bass from these speakers, it's not something you have to worry about, but just something to consider if you do plan on running these full range. Now, with these other two, the tweeter is set about an inch away from the woofer, and so it's not really possible for the woofer to touch the tweeter housing. Now, the other thing to notice is the A670, as well as the R62EZ, has a tweeter housing that kind of floats above the driver, and all the wires are hidden. The other thing to notice is that the tweeter doesn't come out of the center of the cone, meaning that there is more surface area there. It shouldn't make a huge difference, but when you're talking about a six and a half inch woofer, it does make some difference. The other thing to consider is the type of cone that's used in the driver. R62EZ uses an injection polypropylene cone, and polypropylene is known to be stiff and forgiving as far as dampening. So a lot of times stuff like aluminum will ring when it reaches the breakup modes and that's not a really good sound. Whereas when this reaches its breakup, it doesn't really make as bad of a sound as an aluminum cone. The A650 is using a Kevlar cone, which is also good for damping as well as being stiff and light as well. The yellow cone is a nice look if you're into that sort of thing. The A670 is using a carbon fiber composite cone. It's very similar to the Kevlar cone as far as the properties. All of these materials are good. 
but I think these are chosen because they're a little bit more durable. Because it's mounted in the ceiling, it might be exposed to things such as moisture and heat, things that a typical speaker might not be exposed to. Now you also wanna take a look at the material that's used for the tweeter. The R62EZ is using a soft dome tweeter, which kind of has a more forgiving sound. Whereas these two over here are using aluminum drivers, which can give you a little bit more crispness and detail. If you prefer a softer, maybe smoother sound, maybe check out something like this R62EZ. If you like a little bit more detail or crispness in the highs, then aluminum dome tweeters are known to deliver that. On the back, you'll see a magnet. Typically, the bigger the magnet, the stronger the motor structure, but it doesn't necessarily mean a better overall woofer. One thing to look at though, is to see if the magnet has a hole down the center. That's called the vented pull piece, and that actually helps to cool the driver down. Now, depending on whether you expect it to be very dusty, you may prefer one that doesn't have a vented pull piece, but typically it's for cooling to allow the driver to handle a little bit more power, while not overheating the voice coil. Now you'll notice on the back, a crossover network consisting of resistors and capacitors, inductors, which separates out the signal that's sent to the woofer and the tweeter. The better the crossover, the smoother the transition between the woofer and the tweeter. We'll get into that a little bit more later in the video. One way to understand how a speaker will sound is looking at the frequency response graph. Now ceiling speakers are a little bit different because of the placement. The speakers are not facing at you, they're coming down from the ceiling. The other thing to consider is because it's facing down, if you have a hardwood surface or hard floor, there might be a lot of reflections up and down. So it's something to consider when looking at ceiling speakers. So there's different ways to measure the frequency response on these. There's on axis, meaning directly in the center of the speaker, as well as off axis. Now, because these are all coaxial speakers, on axis is typically where it responds the worst. And that's something that we know from most coaxial speakers. Speaker designers know this, and so they optimize for off-axis response, which is probably where you're gonna be with regards to the ceiling speakers. You're not gonna be pointing your ears upward to kind of get the direct on-axis to the tweeter. You're probably gonna be slightly off-axis to it, in front and back, somewhere not on axis. So when I did my measurements, it's an average of on axis as well as off axis up to 30 degrees, which is kind of where you would expect to be. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to consider is the base response on these. If you're planning on using them with a subwoofer, then you're probably gonna cross them over around 80 Hertz, in which case the base response doesn't matter as much. It just has to have a smooth handoff to the subwoofer. But if you're planning on using these full range, meaning that you're gonna send all the base frequencies to these, you don't have a sub, then you're gonna to wanna to take a look at the base frequencies and make sure that it has enough base for your particular preference. Before we take a look at the measurements for each of these, the one thing I want you to consider is if you're gonna use this for home theater, you're probably gonna have room correction built into your AVR, your audio video receiver, in which case that kind of corrects the frequency response for your speakers. Now some speakers handle EQ better than others and a lot of that has to do with the off axis response relative to the on axis response. Because when you fix the off axis, a lot of times it makes the on axis worse and vice versa. You make the on axis better, it makes the off axis worse. You wanna make sure that whichever frequencies you're attempting to fix using EQ are present both in the on axis and off axis response because when you change that, then you know that it's changing it for both equally. So in other words, you're not fixing one axis while at the same time making another axis worse. That also has to do with the crossover network because a lot of times the crossover does determine the overall frequency response and where those dips and peaks are. So here we are taking a look at the frequency response, starting with the A650. Now this is a spatial average. And what we're looking for here is just the overall trend, whether it's upward sloping, straight, or downward sloping. Now, because this is an in-room measurement, this is a little bit different from an anechoic measurement. So something that would measure flat anechoically would tend to have a downward slope when measured in-room. So because this is somewhat flat, we can assume that this would measure with an upward slope slightly if we were to measure it anechoically, meaning in an anechoic chamber with no echoes. So there are some ups and downs here, but overall what we're looking for is consistency because like I was saying earlier, you may be using an AVR to do some room correction. So let's take a look at how it measures on axis. So you can see that there are lots of ups and downs, which we do expect from a coaxial speaker. Here's a measurement 45 degrees off axis. And what we're looking for are similarities. So wherever they look somewhat similar, wherever they have the same pattern, that's where you probably can correct with EQ. So around here, that looks about the same, this part here, but over here where it's up and down, what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna correct here because 
on these off axis, it's going up, whereas on axis is going down and this is up here, it's very different. You probably wanna stay away from trying to correct this area here. Now looking at the base response, these are calibrated for about 85 decibels. So at around 82, we're looking at maybe about 57, 58 Hertz. So that's not bad. That's a pretty good bass response there. So comparing this to the A670, you can see, let's start off with the bass response here, that the bass response is similar, but actually you have more extended bass output with the A650. You'll also notice with the A670 that here in the crossover area, that it does dip down a little bit, whereas the other one stays flat. Let me go ahead and take the other one out. You can also tell that the aluminum dome tweeter is a bit brighter here. So if you're in the speakers that are relatively bright, this might suit your taste here. Now let's take a look at on axis versus off axis on the A670. So there's the on axis response of the 670 and then 45 degrees below, 45 degrees above, and then on the side of it. Because this is an angled speaker, I wanted to take a look at those different angles because they do have different responses. What I wanna do is I wanna look at where they kind of bunch up. So around here, I think is okay to correct. You may wanna stay away from trying to correct these areas here because as you can see, on axis it goes up here, but off axis to the side, it dips down. So if you were to try to remove this here, this would actually make this dip even lower. So stay away from the these areas here when you're trying to EQ. So let's take a look at the R62EZ in comparison to that. And let's go ahead and take this out. As you can see, the bass response is about the same. So maybe around 60 Hertz. You'll also notice that the trend overall for this is a flatter response. So of course it's hard to ignore this peak here, but as you'll see in a bit, that is not something I would be overly concerned with. Taking a look at the on-axis response, you see that on-axis is somewhat similar. You still see this peak here. Let's take a look at 45 degrees and you can see here, because it's all bunched up here, you can EQ this out and not worry about making off-axis worse or on-axis worse. You can kind of just correct them all together. And similarly with these other points here, because they're following similar trends, this does look like a speaker that would take well to EQ. So that's it for the measurements. Let's get back to the features. One thing I like about the R62EZ is it does have bass and treble attenuation controls. For the treble, you can go either minus two or plus two. And for the bass, you can lower that by going minus two or minus four dB. I don't see any controls on the A650 and on the A670, you do have the option to adjust the treble to either plus or minus or neutral. Both the A650 and the A670 have feet that kick out. When you're ready to mount these, you just use a screwdriver and it starts tightening up those feet. The A670 has rubber feet that help with any possible vibrations. You can add those if you'd like, but something to consider that the A650 does not have those. The R62EZ, and I believe this is why they call it the EZ, has an easy mount system where basically you spin the front and the mounts kind of just come down and lock in place and you hit the lock in the front, locks it all up, very easy to do. The other thing I noticed is the R62EZ is also the easiest to remove. A lot of times with these two others, when you go to unscrew it, sometimes the feet kind of get stuck and you have to kind of wiggle them out. So this is definitely the easiest out of the three. Two other specs to look at are the sensitivity and the power handling. Now all of these are rated for 89 decibels, which is about what I saw from my measurements. Because these are 89 dB, that means that almost any amplifier will be able to drive these with no issue. Now, the higher the power handling, the higher the power that the speaker can handle, which means that you can play them louder. The R62EZ is rated at 120 watts max. Typically, half of that is the RMS or continuous value. Power handling on the A650 and the A670 are both 90 watts. And it doesn't say whether that's peak or continuous, so typically you wanna assume that that's peak. These are all eight ohm speakers. The R62EZ claims a frequency response between 50 hertz and 20 kilohertz whereas these two claim 45 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Now, the next thing to look at are the grills. Now, all of these grills are white. Make sure that if you're looking for ceiling speakers and if your ceilings are not white, that you're able to paint them. They're all magnetic. All these look trimless from the front, meaning that you don't see a border around it. But if you look at the back, you'll see the R62EZ and the A650. Both have grills where the entire thing is metal, whereas this one, it's a combination of metal and plastic, which means that you have slightly more of a lip here on the outside of this grill. The end result is the circle that you see on the ceiling is slightly smaller because of that trimless design. The other thing to consider is whether they're waterproof. I don't believe that any of these are waterproof. Forgive me, OSD, I didn't look at 
the website for each of these. OSD does have ceiling speakers with an IP rating, which means that if you're planning on using these, let's say in a bathroom where there's gonna be some condensation or outdoors near a pool, then you may wanna look at different solutions from OSD. The other thing to consider is the warranty. So of course, the longer the warranty, the better. So the other thing to consider is the price per speaker. The A650 come in pairs because they are meant for surrounds. Some of these other ones come in singles because some people might just want a center channel by itself or maybe one speaker here just to fill the sound. So this one and this one do come in single packs. Overall, I have to pick my favorite and my personal favorite is gonna be the R62EZ just because I like the mounting system. I like the polypropylene cone. I thought that the frequency response was very good and easily correctable. I like that it gives you more controls. I like the color, the black and orange looks pretty cool. I forgot to mention this earlier, but it is flared here, meaning that that kind of helps with off axis response. And I like that the tweeter is mounted outside and not coming from the center. It feels very well built. It has a vented pull piece for extra handling. It handles the most out of these three. It has that true trimless design. And overall, I think that with some EQ, this will be a very, very good in-ceiling speaker. Also, the price, in my opinion, is very good. These other two are also very good for the price. The A650, I think, offers a very good value. I thought the frequency response was very respectable for what this is. So if you're looking for a speaker that is angled and if you want an aluminum dome tweeter because you like that sound, well, you may want to look at the A670. So that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. That's it. Take care. Bye-bye. <music>